course, it's great to uh, speak with you. Where are you right now? I'm just curious. Uh, are you in Saskatoon or I'm anywhere in, Sask- in Saskatchewan? Yeah, just got back to Saskatoon last night, so I'm here. Where were you? Uh, were you touring or traveling? What was going yeah, on? Yeah, um, I played Blues Fest in Ottawa, so I was there. Um, I flew in the night before, played it, and then flew back. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Was everybody I know playing there? Like, what is going on? I have no clue. And honestly, I'm maybe it's because I'm like stuck in Western Canada. I hadn't really heard of Blues Fest before, and I was like, that's interesting that I got booked for like a country Blues Fest. Why is Pitbull playing? The Foo Fighters, like absolutely shania twain charlotte cardin everyone you know i've noticed okay like (laughs) ottawa and toronto has its own we just had ours the thing is i don't know what it's like this i don't want to use the word diversity but for Mm. some reason r&b hip-hop soul um they really mix it into the jazz festival these days doesn't matter which one you go to these days all of it yeah i feel like they just need to start having like regional summer festivals there's no yeah. genre involved anymore it's just everything and you know when you, you describe that it kind of describes your music i know you it's written that you're sort of neon soul and whatever but honest to god you can do whatever you want i from hearing your voice and your talent <laughs> pop r&b if you wanted to do country you can do country you're one of those artists that i really believe uh was born in in music and it's uh it's such a pleasure and so needed, of course, in this industry because um, uh, uh, being authentic, it's so important. And you do, you truly represent that. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what we're making here, but I think we just keep making whatever music and then let label people figure out how to pitch it. <laughs> Yeah, well, one of the things that they can say and know is the fact that you're part of uh, First Up with RBC X Music. Congratulations on that. How does it feel being part of the 2023 family? It's crazy. I feel like so honored to be a part of it. And um, I have so many good friends that are a part of the program this year and people that I look up to. So it's just really cool to um, be considered for it and to be a part of such a cool group. Now, I'm just curious, when when did you hear about this and, you know, what was the decision to be, you know, give it a shot? Yeah, I think um, last year I heard about it for the first time. Um, My manager sent it to me and was like, this is so cool. Um, And since the first second we saw it, I was like, okay, we're definitely applying for this because, you know, in this state of music, um, having help from whoever you can get is super, super important and like realistically kind of the only way that us developing artists can get started so I was like we're doing it let's do it and yeah so we applied and here we are what has this program done for you what kind of opportunities have you gotten to be part of this yeah so um lots of show opportunities so far um and just looking to that's like where my head is at right now for this year I'm just trying Mm -hmm. to play as much live music as possible so um obviously I get to talk to you, which is really cool also, but I feel like we're like just getting started and yeah, playing a lot, which has been really cool. You know, it's interesting that you say you're, you know, feeling like just getting started. You've been doing this from yay high. Can you talk about (laughs) that, please? Growing up and really feeling the energy of music. Totally. Yeah. I think um, I wanted to do music since I was uh, like a little girl. I remember my parents had this like talk back like jukebox toy or something and I remember recording myself singing on it and then I would play it back and be super distorted and I would cry because I thought I had a bad singing voice um but I just remember like from as early as I can remember wanting to record stuff and my whole family had to take a mandatory five years of piano and I went a little (laughs) bit beyond that and but then as soon as I started actually singing piano turned into just like a vehicle for accompaniment and Okay, you. I, when I was growing up, I was in the band. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was in the band for like 10 years. But all I ever got a chance to do was to play in front of our school at like commencements and whatever else. Totally. You did something else, though. Didn't you have a chance to tour when you were younger? Yes, I joined a marching band when I was in grade eight because <laughs> they came to our school and promised that they would take us to like water parks and amusement parks around the States. So I joined and it was awesome. I was on a drum line and we wore these like massive um, pieces of equipment and carried drums around on our like 
I don't know, small, frail little bodies. And it was awesome, but it was like the hardest thing I've ever done. I think it really prepared me for touring. Uh, thank you for saying that, because that was going to be my next question. How difficult is it? Because when I see especially the black colleges uh, doing it in the States, um, and it's like insane, it's the precision and, you know, the moves and everything else. It for being crazy. that age, what was that like? No, Yeah, no, it was insane. I remember just like having so much back pain from having to carry this snare drum or bass <laughs> drum on my back because you seriously had like a whole apparatus that wrapped around your whole body. And I remember the rest of the band was like, they'd practice a little and then go hang out. And we had like a really strict drum teacher that like any moment that we were away, you were either sleeping or you were like practicing or playing. <laughs> and so we would like go and sit out in the front of the schools that we were playing at. And just like for hours in the hot sun, we're practicing stuff. So it was a little crazy, but it was awesome. I feel like it was, at least it makes a good story. And um, yeah. <laughs> it definitely does. Cause it leads you into figuring out that music was your thing. When did you know that, you know, you could be part of this great industry? I feel like I always wanted to. It was always like my dream and goal and aspiration. But honestly, mm -hmm. probably not until like 2020, I realized like, oh, this can actually be a job. Because I think growing up in Saskatoon, I, I didn't see anyone that was doing it. I didn't see any people that, you know, were working musicians or were gigging, but then also had like another job on the side. Like I just didn't see that world and I didn't realize it was possible. So I think only recently in 2020 when I like, wrote my own EP and, you know, started seeing what the process was like and how I could actually do it as a job was when I realized I could do it. Well, the reason why is because in the wintertime, Saskatoon is cold. <laughs> There's nothing else to do. It's cold. <laughs> I got a taste of that a couple of years ago and ran away. It's like, I don't no, know how you all do it. It's sick and twist. I don't know either. It blows my mind. I don't think people were meant to live here. It's so no. crazy. <laughs> now, I, I'm curious, though, you said you figured out in 2020. So during the pandemic, when we were all locked down, were you slowly starting to, you know, sort of drift over and start figuring out, you know, songs and because yeah. we were all going through so much emotion, there were so many things that we were seeing that uh, changed all of us in some way, shape or form. Was that going on with you musically? Totally. Yeah, I think um you know, I'd been writing songs for a long time before that, but that was the first time. I don't know if it necessarily like inspired anything, but it definitely gave me the space to start working on projects and stuff. And I, I was finishing a university degree. I graduated into the pandemic and there weren't any marketing jobs. I graduated with a, a bachelor's of marketing and no one was hiring. So I was like, okay, I might as well try to make an EP. And then I did. And yeah, so I think it gave me more so the space and opportunity. <laughs> but you did something else too, which I think is amazing. And it has to do with two words, or I should say a name. Mm -hmm. And somebody who is the family is such a strong influence in the Canadian music industry. Mm -hmm. Alan Slate. Can you finish the rest of that, please? Alan Slate, Juno Masterclass. <laughs> yeah so awesome that was like one of the best opportunities um that I've been involved in those guys are amazing and yeah I, I did that um last year and went for a week to Toronto and just like had as much information pumped into my brain as humanly possible and and even still I'm in in touch and, and in contact with a lot of people that were involved in the course a lot of mentors and they say like, as soon as you get in that first year, that's just the beginning and their doors are always open. So, yeah. It's kind of funny because I usually interview all the folks for uh, the master class. Last year was the first time I didn't have a chance, mm. but, um, you know, proof in the pudding and how well uh, things like RBCX Music and the Alan Slate master class. I mean, for Alan Slate master class was when I first met a little lady about I'd say she was under five feet tall, <laughs> going by the name of Havaya Mighty. And yeah. look at her now. I actually Icon. saw her last night. Today, as we speak, she's releasing her new LP. 
She's won a Juno Award, being the first uh, female to win in the rap category for Best Album of the Year. She is blowing up everywhere. And I can remember, like I said, I was interviewing all the artists for Ellen Slate Masterclass. She was one of them. And I remember totally. turning out the mic going, there's something about this one. <laughs> and look at her now. And you being part of, again, that family too. I mean, that says a lot about your music. But when we look at your music, what kind of stories do you like to tell through your music? Yeah, I think um, sort of the main things that I recognize as a through line, I definitely talk a lot about um, like identity and and kind of what it was like to figure out what my identity was growing up in Saskatchewan. And um, I talk a lot about love and relationships. And yeah, I think and that with a connection to, you know, a little bit more of a remote um, upbringing. It's funny because when I listen to your music, I feel like you're in the wrong era. And when I say that, <laughs> I mean, if you were back in like 92, 93, yes. that to me is the feel <laughs> I get when I hear your music and I see your pictures and I just totally. feel the vibe. That's what I feel. It's sort of like an early 90s kind of thing. That is the blueprint. That's the inspiration. That's the goal for everything. I think like all of my musical references are from like early 90s, mid 90s. Sure. Then let's talk about that EP that you mentioned earlier. What's that EP called and what's it about? Yeah, so I just um, put an EP out at the end of June. It's called Where to Find Me. Um, oh, I like the title. Where to Find I Me. I love the title. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, first one was called Towards the End. This EP is Where to Find Me. And we're just going with that. Um, yeah, it's about um, a lot about my identity, a lot about I like growing up in kind of a conservative province um I was a really late blooming bisexual and so I think it has like a lot to deal with that and and sort of my first feelings of infatuation with women and stuff in a way that I think everyone can relate to because it's just you know feelings of first love and stuff and you know in and those subjects too especially these days wow it's it's crazy because it's almost like people want to be who they are, but you have yeah. so many other people out there who, I mean, there's always been those pockets, but I guess because of social media, there are people who just don't want people to be who they are and enjoy life. What do you think about that? I think it's crazy. And I think, um, especially as like songwriters, I think it's like denying the world a lot of artistry and and magical things because, you know, you take away a massive part of someone's identity and you're not getting the full story so I think it's yeah. just really exciting how uh how much the world is evolving and how uh supported people are through you know so many different programs and everything so that we can just share all of our stories and there's space to share everything now we definitely need that is there a single out right now a single or a music video out right now yeah, I have um, my most recent uh, single that I put out was called She Said, and we filmed the music video actually in Saskatchewan. It's like kind of like a broody R&B single, but then mm -hmm. the music video is me um, around a bunch of horses. So, yeah. <laughs> That'll be interesting. I got to check that out. What's the song about? Um, when I was, I, I lived in Canmore a few years before the pandemic. and No, during the pandemic, sorry. And um, I was working at a cafe and had a crush on the girl that worked across the hall from me. And um, I thought we were being flirtatious. You know, she would come. I would already know her coffee order. She'd be very nice and sweet to me. And I remember one time I cut my hair, like a pretty drastic haircut. And she goes, oh, it looks good. But I loved your long hair. Like it was so beautiful before. I was like, okay, well, don't tell me that because I did just cut my hair. But also... Did you have a crush on me when my hair was longer? Just trying to, it's about navigating um, yeah. like how friendly platonic interactions are with women, but then getting it confused with flirtation and how I kind of was navigating that a few years ago. Very cool. I love that. That's a great story to tell yeah. through music. <laughs> I, I, you know what? It's kind of funny because, um, and I, I don't want to jump around and we're going to wrap this up soon, oh, but um, because you were at the master class, you were at the, listen to me, huh, you were <laughs> at the Junos in Edmonton, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. How did we not see each other? Because I always cover the Junos. I don't know. And I was there. And of course, Edmonton was damn cold too. 
It was crazy. Um, Freezing. Thank God everything was a close <laughs> walk I know. away. You had all the tunnels attached yeah. to everything. <laughs> yeah. What was the experience like for you being at the Junos? Because I'm assuming this was your first time being at the Junos. Yeah, it was my first time at the Junos. It was my first time like ever doing a red carpet or anything like that. And it was amazing. It was so much fun. Wait a second. You did the red carpet too? Yeah. So how the heck did we miss each other? I don't know. I was on the red cart. Listen to me again. I, uh, <laughs> I was on the red. Well, basically anybody who knows me knows yeah. I'm everywhere. I'm like know. up, down and everything. So the only oh. thing, because of the time I got into, I didn't go to the, uh, what do they call it? The cafe? I think it is where okay. artists get to perform. Oh, yeah, every. Yeah. Did you perform there? Um, I performed at um, a different venue for Juno Fest. I think it was the night before the Juno. Okay. Yeah. And then, of course, the only thing I didn't do was I didn't go to the, because um, I decided to just go back to my hotel room and just work. What was it? The Sony party or was it the, uh, the Universal. Universal party? Ooh. Yeah, it was Universal. Oh, yeah. It was Universal. And that was I a didn't. Party. It, you know what? It's you were always smart. the party. It's smart they, to not go to it. It was crazy. It oh was no, really I, fun, but... yeah, no. This year, I just decided I want to go back to my hotel room and I wanted to get my work done because I wanted to make wow. sure that the next day all my interviews were up totally. and everything. But I've gone to them before and they're just madhouses. And I always love when they do it in an arcade kind of place too. It was so much fun. There was like you'd have like a massive Negroni in your hand, but then also be bowling and like high heels. Yeah. It was so much fun. Yeah. And then you don't know who you're running into. Was there somebody <laughs> you ran into who you were just like, I never thought I'd get a chance to meet. Oh yeah. There was a ton of people there. I think um, Priyanka, uh, the drag queen who actually, she interviewed me on the red carpet before, but then was like, just hanging out there. And I was like, I love you. But there was Good just friend so of many, mine. like, so I love Priyanka. Um, yeah. Just so many cool people. Um, and like, artists but then also like a bunch of managers to these artists that i really look up to and it was just it was so cool to um rub in shoulders with people i am so happy for you and your experiences that you're getting from this because this is one of the things that i love about this industry and i love yeah. talking to emerging artists like yourselves because what i'm really happy about is now that we get a chance to talk because of first choice uh first mm -hmm. choice uh first, first up with rbcx yeah. music we now have our introduction. So now when we start doing the red carpets and you're up for nominations and awards, oh, we got we'll a lot to talk about. We'll exactly. We'll go uh, what's what's happening for the rest of the summer? Because you said you were doing everything you can on getting shows together. Are there yeah. more coming up? Yeah, I have. Actually, this is kind of like my longest break over the summer. So I leave to Toronto for the first up um, mixer that's happening next week. Yes. Um, ah, I'm going to be there. Yay. Okay. We'll meet yes. you there. Perfect. Yes. I'm going to be there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Awesome. So I have that. Um, and then I think I have like a, a weekend or something. Uh, and then I'm playing Wapiti Fest in Fernie, BC. And then I'm I have sorry, a little what? break. Wapiti Fest in Fernie, BC. Wapiti. Wapiti. What the heck Fernie. is Wapiti yeah. Fest? Um, it's like a cute little folk fest in Fernie, BC and everyone camps and I've never been before, but apparently it's awesome. So we're going to go oh play a little festival in the woods. It sounds like a 90s cartoon character for kids, totally, you know? Totally, yeah. Whoppity, <laughs> whoppity. <laughs> uh, and just curious, too, because the holiday season is going to be on us. Mm -hmm. Any chance that you're going to record any holiday music? Yes, I really want to. That's like something that I'm trying to focus my brain onto for this year, because I think this is the time you have to do it, you know? You yes. Do it in the summer, so... Yep. Yes, I will. Because that's, you know, a little 90s R&B Christmas music. Come on. I love it. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Congratulations on your success. So Thank happy you so for you. Looking forward to. Oh, and, and very quickly, too, because we talked about your, your EP now. Any chance for any new music uh, yes. coming soon? Yeah, we're we're working on. Um, I have a handful of singles that um, okay. I have in my back mm -hmm. pocket. So we're just sort of planning and, and working on finishing those up. Fantastic. So I will yeah. see you at the mixer. Congratulations. Totally. Got to make sure we snap a picture together. And uh, like I said, all the best. So looking forward to meeting you in person. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's so nice to meet you as well. And I'll see you next week.